Hello and welcome to the third video in this MATLAB series in which we build and analyze transmission lines using the tlcalc function. In this video we will learn how to build and analyze a parallel plate transmission line. Since this is the third video on this series, I assume you are already familiar with the tlcalc function, how to build geometry arrays in MATLAB, and that you are also familiar with transmission line theory. We will build upon the previous code that we did in the second video in which we built and analyzed a coaxial transmission line. If you haven't watched that video yet and haven't built the code, I strongly recommend that you watch the previous video first. With that said, let's begin. In the previous video, we learned how to build a coaxial transmission line. This is the code that we made. Now we will use the same code to build a parallel plate transmission line. This is done in a very easy manner because we built our code to be as modular as possible. And so if we want to build a new transmission line, we just need to change some parameters and just build a new transmission line with very few lines of code. Now this parallel plate transmission line is going to be embedded in a dielectric medium. And so now we begin. Let's review over the previous code. First in this section we initialize MATLAB, close all the windows, clear the command window, clear variables so that we start with a clean slate every time we run the code. Here we have the physical units, meters, seconds, millimeters, centimeters, hertz, gigahertz and the physical constant of speed of light in free space. We are not going to change uh, any of this and we also open the figure window. Now in the dashboard it is where we're going to type our dimensions for the parallel plate transmission line. Our frequency is going to be the same 2.4 gigahertz. Now this ER is not going to be the relative permittivity of the coaxial line, this is going to be the relative permittivity of parallel plate transmission line and we can change this coaxial to now the parallel plate transmission line. Now we're not going to have an inner or outer conductor radius so we will change or rather we will erase these parameters and put the new parameters of the parallel plate transmission line. We're going to have the width of the parallel plates which is going to be equal to 2.0 uh, centimeters. This is the width of the parallel plates and then D is going to be equal to 0 0.8 centimeters. This is going to be your space or distance between the plates. Now the grid parameters, we can keep them as is or we can change SX or SY to be a little smaller. So let's put six centimeters. And so again, this is going to be your grid resolution. It's going to resolve the minimum uh, length, either W or D. It's going to have 20 unit cells per length. Now we calculate the grid. Remember that we change R1 and R2 for W and D. So we can just change this code to W and D, and then snap the grid to critical dimensions. Again, we can change R1 and R2 for W and D. Now we compute the grid size, and this is also kept the same. We don't do anything to this. This is NX and Y. We create our grid axis XA, YA, and then we create the mesh grid. And then I'm going to stop the code here by typing return. 
what's going to happen is that when I run the code, MATLAB is going to stop at this line. Let's click run to see if there's no mistakes. And I think we're good. So this is a nice trick to troubleshoot your code. You can start typing small chunks of code and then type return to stop MATLAB here then see that you don't have any error. So we can take uh, off return now. And now we are ready to build our parallel plate transmission line. So I'm just going to change here, build parallel plate transmission line. And now I'm going to erase this because we're not having inner or outer conductors. Now we're going to have uh, plates. So first, let's start with conductor one. And first, we're going to calculate the number of unit cells that each of these dimensions have. So NX is going to be W over DX rounded and then NY is going to be around D over DY rounded because the width again, uh, the, the width of the parallel plates is along the X axis and then the spacing between the plates is along the Y axis. Let me, let me just uh, comment that here. for width of parallel plate, then number of unit cells for spacing between plates. Now we will start with our starting index along Y, and we're going to call this NY1, which is going to be equal to one plus floor NY, which is your number of unit cells in the Y direction minus the width or the, the I'm sorry, the number of unit cells of the spacing over two. This is a centering algorithm that will help us place the parallel plate transmission lines in the center in the Y direction. So this is our starting point, which is going to be our position for top plate. And then our NY2 is going to be NY1, which we calculated here, plus NY, which is our spacing between the plates minus one and then this will be the position for bottom plate again with this line of code this little uh, code snippet you ensure that your parallel plate is going to be centered uh, along the y-axis now let's do our starting and stop our start and stop indices for the parallel plate. We're going to call this NX1 and we're going to do the same, but now on the X direction. NX minus NX over two. This is our starting position of plate and then nx2 is going to be equal to nx1 plus nx minus 1. This is our stop position 
of plates. So again, just summarizing, NY1, again, centered along the y-axis is our position for the top plate, and Y2 is our position for the bottom plate. And X1 is where we're going to start building the plate along the X direction, and NX2 is where we're stopping building the plate. Now we are ready to build our conductors. So C1 equals, we're going to put this, we're going to initialize our array to zero, then C2, we're going to do both at the same time, so we can change this to conductor 1 and conductor 2. And then C2, we're also initialize it to 0. Now here's where we build the plates. The conductor 1 is going to be this index, the position of the top plate, and it's going to start at NX1 and it's going to stop and at NX2. So we can index C1 to be from NX1 to NX2. Again, we're starting at NX1, stopping at NX2 along the X direction. So from NX1 to NX2, at position NY1, we're going to have our plate, which is 1. This is our top plate. Now for C2, which is our bottom plate, we're also starting from NX1, stopping at NX2, but now it's going to be at NY2, our position for the bottom plate, and this is the bottom plate. Now we are ready to build our dielectric. Again, since this parallel plate is just embedded in a uniform dielectric medium, we can just create our dielectric array by creating an array of ones and then multiply this times the dielectric permittivities. Since this is one and it's an array, it's going to be ER times once and we're done. And since we already have our code to visualize the array, the arrays, we can just uncomment this, which we commented last session type again return here at the end so that MATLAB stops here then click run. As you can see here are the conductors and the dielectric and this looks good. This is our conductor 1 which is the top plate, our conductor 2 which is the bottom plate, our dielectric permittivity, uh, our dielectric array which is just uh, homogeneous and it has a value of 2.5 and then if we add everything together, it was C1 plus C2 plus ER, we get our, well it shouldn't be our coaxial line, we can change that title later to parallel plate line. But you can see that the two plates are here with, with W spacing D embedded in a dielectric medium of 2.5. So I think this looks good. Now let's close this. We can comment this. And then again because we build our code as modular as possible, I think this is the only thing that you have to do to build a parallel plate transmission line. Uh, the next step is to run tail calc. Here we don't change anything, right? We already have our E1, uh, our ER, our C1, our C2. 
uh, we calculate the propagation constant, we report results, and we visualize the fields. So we are ready to run the code again. And here we go. This is the result for our parallel, uh, our parallel plate transmission line, C1, C2, the dielectric, the voltage, again, remember that TL calc feeds the conductor 1 with voltage 1 and then C2 is your ground 0 and then ER is again uh, uniform homogeneous these are your fields in X and your fields in Y and this is how you build a parallel plate transmission line in MATLAB and analyze it using TL calc as you can see once you have your code built in a modular way, simulating other transmission lines is very easy as you just have to rebuild conductor 1, conductor 2, then your dielectric and change some uh, minor parameters. And that's it for this video. See you next time.